going on YouTube, Clover Bells here, back with another Scarlet Violet video. And today I'm gonna tell you how to create a complex EV spread for Pokemon for competitive play. So this is always a very important aspect of trying to, you know, get into the competitive scene because you know when you build a team, you know it's great to have the the optimal six uh, for what you want to do. But now you have to create an EV spread um, for each Pokemon, and what determines their spread often de de determines, you know. A, a based on a bunch of factors and what I'm going to show here in this video is what those factors are and then how you can create general spreads uh, so this way you can go ahead and test your team out in ladder and also eventually perfect those spreads after testing and then in hopes of bringing them to a potential tournament right so um, we're going to use four examples here to, to demonstrate just how we create a complex EV spread and what I mean by complex EV spread is just things that are not just straight 252 252 like something like this right this is very easy um, in terms of what we have done in the past, like especially when you were growing up as a kid, oh, I'm just gonna go max attack, max speed, and then that's it, right? Well, it, there's other factors now that, you know, this is just not uh, as optimal uh, as some other choices, right? So uh, I'm gonna show you what these factors are in creating these spreads, uh, and then, you know, we'll, we'll just go over it at the end, all right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and show those factors. All right, so here's my general formula that I like to use when creating an EV spread. And the first thing, and the most important one, which is why I have it in um, a star next to it, is uh, you gotta pick a speed tier, okay? So in competitive Pokemon, the most important stat is a speed stat. Uh, you know, you could do a, like a million damage, but it mean, it's meaningless if you can't go first uh, and pick up the KO, right? So what you wanna do is, for depending on the Pokemon that you have, you want to pick a, a meta threat to it, right? Something that can deal super effective damage to it. And you want to try and outspeed that based on your tools that you have on your team. So um, that could mean factoring in Tailwind, factoring a, an Icy Wind, a Bulldoze, whatever. You know, something that can get you speed control and then allow you to outspeed uh, that particular threat on your team, right? And that'll determine your speed investment. After that, then you want to invest in your uh, attack or special attack, right? And what I like to do for there is look for my EV bumps or my benchmarks, right? Points where the stat increases by two instead of one, right? We've done this all the time in our team building videos back in Sword and Shield, and now we've even done it in Scarlet and Violet. And we're gonna show that again here in these examples. Um, and then after that, you have some EVs left over. So then we just put them into our bulk, right? And what we mean by our bulk is our HP, our defense, and our special defense stat, right? So for HP, I like to account for either uh, life orb chip damage if it has uh, a life orb, maybe potential sand chip if it doesn't have a, a life orb, and just factor in the weather because you know Tyranitar is running crazy right now. And some of these numbers for HP, I like to put it as 175, 191, or 207 because this will optimize whether you're taking you know 10, 11, or 12 damage per turn. And then the berry recovery, if I have like a citrus berry recovery or like you know some other. Uh, other berry recovery like Ayapapa, for example, uh, and then whatever's left after that, then I just invest in defense and special defense, right? And usually I like to put a little bit more into the to, in, into the lower one, uh, so this way it gets a little bit of a balance, you know. Um, and then you know I can jump up the ladder, you know, based off of those three factors. But then I realize, oh, I actually died to a certain attack, or I I don't pick up the KO against a certain Pokemon that I should always want to KO. So then you do what we call finding an offensive or defensive EV count, right? And then I'll adjust my, my bulk or I'll adjust my special attack, uh, taking away from some of the bulk and make sure that I have that count that I want, right? And again, there's no way of knowing number four unless you go into the ladder and test it, right? You should always test, okay? Just because, you know, when you're team building and then you come up with a spread, it's never done, right? Because you have to go out and test it and see, you know, certain matchups where you just don't die or you just don't survive, I should say, you know, based on certain attacks uh, from certain Pokemon, all right? So now what we're gonna do is go back here and take a look at our four examples here and show how we use all four factors into creating a, an EV spread, all right? So we'll start with the Titan first. Okay, so here's the Titan here, and often the Titan is paired with Abomasnow, and Abomasnow gives the Titan a couple of tools that can help us create our EV spread. First of all, it has Snow Warning, which will allow it to summon the snow, and then that means the Titan with Slush Rush uh, can get double the speed 
uh, which was uh, which is important because then I can figure out how to outspeed pretty much the rest of the meta uh, because of the snow, right? So then from there, it also gives me Aurora Veil, so I can always get plus ones to my defense and special defense, and technically I also get it in the defense anyway because of, of this, the new effect of snow, right? So now from here, I just have to figure out well what speed threat do I want to outspeed uh, so this way I can maybe you know not have to die to it right so if I go down my list here I don't have to worry about Dragapult just because you know it's not really threatening at the moment and I can always just KO it with a, a nice move so then all right these are banned uh, then I find my first target right so a Talent Flame is something that's very common uh, and something that I don't want to die to um, you know for in terms of the Titan right and if I just do like a max Talon Flame 195 so I got to figure out how to beat 195 uh, with my snow now I understand talent flame has a tailwind okay that's a factor but uh, let's just let's just assume that at some point in the game talent flame has been chipped enough after going for something like great birds and and you know uh, flare blitzes that maybe it just doesn't have that priority tailwind anymore and now I can outspeed it even though it's max speed right so how do I do that? Well, Talonflame was at 195, right? So I got to get to 196 somehow. So if I do my calculator here, if I do 196 divided by two, and that comes out to 98. So in the snow with 98 speed investment, I can I can outspeed Talonflame, right? So I'm just gonna go to 98, right, like this. All right, and this is this is uh, already all I need. All right, now I might want to outspeed potential speed creepers that are also doing the same thing, so I can just do this. All right, and that's it. Uh, that's my speed tier. Uh, that's the 44 investment is all I need because I have the luxury of snow and that'll let me outspeed talent flame and pretty much almost all of the meta um, except for something like a dragon pool. All right, so then um, following my formula, I have to go into my attack investment and 113, while it's pretty good, it's not like super great. So I'm just going to, uh, if anything, go into max attack, but I just want to show you the EV bumps here just so that you understand how we do things. Um, and here's the first bump, right? So here is 152 and then right here 154. Here's the first EV bump and again This goes up by plus two instead of plus one. All right, and then it's every 80 EVs within uh, this attack bar, right? So it's three placements and it's every 80 EVs. So 80 plus 52. All right If you do that math real quick, it's gonna get to 165 over here. So 132 investment You see how you went from 163 to 165. This is the the third investment but i still want a little bit more so i can go to the third bump which is another 80 evs so that'll get me to 212 so yeah you go from 174 to 176 all right so that's really really nice and then from here i have all this leftover bulk 252 252 now i'm, I'm sorry 252 h uh uh evs and now i i have to understand okay i got hp defense and special defense how do i want to divide this if you look at this huge HP value, right? And so Titan is a unique example where like, this is quote unquote diminishing returns. I don't need HP anymore. 245 is already all I need. I'm just gonna do this, okay? And now I understand that with 246, this is a, this is already more than HP than like the entire map. Right? And assuming they have like full investment. So now I have to figure out, okay, defense is special defense. So now I have to decide after testing on ladder, all right, I figured that Gold Dango was just like running wild and KOing me, especially with like choice specs, make it rain. All right. And even with like Terra Steel. Uh, so I have to figure out how can I survive that um, and, you know, KO it right back potentially. Right. So then I have to go into what we call the Pokemon damage calculator. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So now we're going to go into our damage calculator, the Pokesports damage calculator, because they have the Terrestrialize button. And we're going to set it up uh, with the Titan and Gold Dango because I need to survive, make it rain. Um, and for the sake of argument, we have also given this a Titan the Assault Vest. Oops, <laughs> I was already just calculating it. So um, here we have Make It Rain uh, on the Gold Dango. Uh, actually, I need to put it in. All right, there it is. And we put Modest and Max Special Attack, okay? And it turns out that even with the Assault Vest, uh, I am able to survive the Make It Rain, which is actually really, really good, okay? But then you factor in the item of Choice Specs Okay, of course they love writing running choice specs and now I just absolutely get destroyed uh, but uh, you have to remember that I have the Aurora Veil so they factor in light screen and I'm still okay but now you factor in Terra Steel 
and this is where I just still pretty much get one shot, right? So now I have to figure out how much special defense investment that do I need to have with Assault Vest and Lightspeed to survive Gold Dangle, Choice Specs, Make It Ring. So this is always a point in calc and let's see how much I need. So I'm gonna up the special defense until I reach a good enough number where I can survive the Oko. And there it is, right? So 84 to 99 point five. So I survived with 100 investment special defense and that's good. So now I'm gonna bring up my special defense to this, all right? And that means I have the calc that I need to survive the gold dango, make it ring. Choice specs, Terra Steel. So then I just have 104 EVs left over. If I want, I can just put it all into my attack. So here I went from 176. I, I just maxed my attack after that and then just put the rest into my defense. Something like this, right? And this is how you do it. This is uh, my Titan calc uh, where I can survive, make it rain, outspeed Talon Flame, aka you know the rest of the meta, you know with Slush Rush, uh, and then I have like max attack, right? And then search, of course, again as we said, survive, make it rain. So um, that's how you do it. So now what we're gonna do is show you a couple more examples of pretty much the same idea, uh, and we'll just go into Dragonite next, uh, you know, because Dragonite is a very popular Pokemon. But how do you EV a Dragonite? So let's take a look. Okay, so now looking at Dragonite here, and uh, again, I understand Dragonite is a Dragon type. Okay, it's a Flying type, has Inner Focus, so I don't really have to worry about Intimidate. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to look at is what uh, is threatening to Dragonite in terms of a faster Pokemon. So I could also say Dragapult, of course. Um, and then I also factor in, well, you know, Dragapult is not so common at the moment anymore, um, even though it is still threatening. Um, so I'll pass on the Dragapult for now and look at the next fastest Dragon. Okay, Noivern and Sikwazar, these are still Pokemon that are not too relevant or not too common at the moment. So I'm going to keep going down and I find my first uh, Dragon type Pokemon that is strong against Dragonite and that is a Garchomp. So Garchomp um, with Dragon Claw against Dragonite is not great. So I have to factor that in and I, to do that I also want to speed it and Garchomp has a speed of 169 when it's max speed. So I got to beat 169, okay? Well, there's a few ways I can do that, and I have a I have a move that can let me do that if I'm able to set it up. So first of all, let's do a typical Dragonite move set with Dragon Claw Extreme Speed, of course, and then this is the move that will let me outspeed it. Dragon Dance, uh, and then this is a filler move. This could be Protect, or this could be you know something else. But for the sake of it, I'll just put Protect. So Dragon Dance gives me a plus one speed. So at plus one, can, how do I outspeed Garchomp? Garchomp was at 169. I gotta go for 170. So if I do 170 divided by 1.5, all right, 113.3333. So I need 114. So I'm gonna go to 114, and this will let me outspeed Dragon uh, Garchomp at plus one with my Dragon Nets. So uh, because of that, I don't really need to go Jolly. I can just go Adamant, which is great for me because then I get an attack boost. And now I've got my speed tier. So now I'm just gonna invest in my attack stat. Uh, and then let's factor in the fact that I have a, a life, orb, right? Okay, so now we're gonna go into HP optimization. So with the life orb, um, I'm gonna lose one tenth of my HP per turn. Uh, we understand that, but for now, let's just invest in my attack stat right here. So again, here's the first bump here, 174 to 176, so 44 investment, which means another 80 EVs, 124 will be the next bump. Okay, that's really good. Uh, and then from here, I can I can keep going, okay? Or um, I can figure out uh, if I just wanna go straight into the HP number. And I think I want a little bit more uh, just because I really want Dragonite to do a bunch of damage. Uh, and we'll go to the third bump here, right here, 204. Okay, so now I have 196 EVs left to play with. Uh, and then I'm just going to invest into my HP number. So this will let me do that right now with 20 uh, because 169 divided by 10 is 16.9. Uh, so 16 damage per turn I'll take from life orb, but again, I still want a little bit more bulk I want this Dragonite to be like high damage, but relatively bulky. I'm gonna go to the next life orb threshold, which is 179 Okay, which is really nice, but again, I noticed I still have 96 EVs and I know that I'm gonna need another 80 EVs to get to 189 So I'm gonna go ahead and do that All right, and there it is. So now I've optimized uh, my life orb chip damage and still have a pretty good amount of HP and now I just have leftover bulk So I can just go 4 4 here and then see that my defense is the lower of the two So I'm just gonna put it right here. Like this. Okay, and that's it. 
All right, and I can jump on the ladder with this. So, so Titan, I factored in, you know, a damage calc uh, with the Assault Vest, you know, trying to survive Gold Daniel. This one, I just really went for a Guard Chomp Speed tier to outspeed it after Dragon Dance. Optimize the HP because I have a Life Orb. And then, you know, I went into the Attack Stat, the 30 EV bump, and the rest with 12 Defense here and 4 Defense, Special Defense. This is just leftover EVs um, that I just put it in just because, all right? And again, if you jump on the ladder with this and you find that there's something that you're missing the KO on or you know you're not surviving then you change the spread the same thing that we can do with Satitan, right so um that's it and now let's look at tyranitar as our third example and see what we can do here so with tyranitar again uh you, one thing to note that with sandstream you get a plus one in your special defense which is actually really really good <coughs> all right so then how do I want to go from here? So I understand that, again, just like the Titan Goldango is common in the meta, and I also want to quote unquote survive to make it rain, but also I want to try and outspeed it. So max speed, modest Goldango. All right, I didn't have to put modest, but max speed hits 136. If I can outspeed 136, maybe with 137, 138, I can probably get off like a crunch move, which is good against, um, you know, a ghost type, but of course it does have to steal typing. But if I can outspeed it, that's really good. So how do I get Tyranitar uh, to 138 speed? So if I go uh, a typical set here with Rock Slide, Crunch, and Dragon Dance, once again, just like get uh, Dragon Knight and Protect over here, uh, then I can try and outspeed the Gold Dang. So now what number with plus one will let me outspeed 130, uh, 136? So if I do a little bit of math, I need 137 divided by five and i need 91 investment so 91 will let me quote unquote speed tie it but i need to outspeed it so i need to go one more so now i go to 92 and this will let me outspeed um max speed a modest gold dango right so that's really good uh this will get me to 138 and again if you look at gold dango one last time uh just like a max speed 138 this will outspeed 136 so i got my stuff my speed tier that's good so from here i just want to go adamant all right, and again, I'm going to be looking to invest into another EV bump over here. So here's 176. All right, another 80 EVs, 124. That's pretty much all I really need because Tyranitar are strong. And then you always have Dragon Dance. So you're going to be doing a lot of damage. And now I have 300 EVs left to play with uh, in my bulk. All right, so I'm just always going to max out the HP with T-Tar here because base 100, really, really good. Um, a bulky T-Tar is always really nice. So 207 is what I want. And now I have 48 EVs left. And now I can decide just to like invest one point here and then a little bit more in special defense. Um, and then I have to see whether or not this uh, specific cow can survive the, the gold dangle make it rain, right? So uh, I'm going to jump on the ladder here and let's assume like, okay, this is what I got. And now can I survive gold dangle make it rain with this uh, particular spread? So let's take a look. Okay, so uh, as luck would have it, well, sort of, depending on how you look at it, if this is a modest choice specs, make it rain, non terrestrialized Godango, uh, I actually do survive the, the um, you know, the, the make it rain. So uh, that's really good because then I just need like one, I don't even need investment. So that's nice, but you factor in um, Terra Steel and now you just get uh, destroyed. <laughs> so now you have to factor in, okay, uh, I have to have another kind of thing to reduce damage on my team. Either I have maybe Grimstar light screens or something else create a light screen, or I put an Assault Vest on Tyranitar. So this is something that has been rising, uh, especially with the Tyranitar Lycanroc teams, uh, is that they have been going with the Assault Vest. And if I do go that route, uh, then I have to adjust my spread again. But I am, I can eat, I can survive the Make It Rain, which is really, really nice. But then I can't use Dragon Dance anymore or Protect. So then you have to factor, you know, uh, I have to have maybe an icy wind on the on my team uh, to help me out speed the gold dango, um, and that's something else to think about when you're team building. But at the very least, I can survive it, and then I just have to do a couple more coverage moves, like maybe something like fire punch, uh, just to like try and pick up a KO against a steel type, and then maybe this could be like terra blast. And what some T Tars are doing now is going for terra flying, so this way they don't have to take uh, a, a four times super effective. Uh, fighting move which is actually very very smart so then you just factor this in all right um and then you know does fire punch even pick up this ko let me even take a look i don't even know uh fire punch is this a, a good offensive calc all right 
and uh, it does not, but it does more than half. So at the very least, if I can survive the hit, uh, then I can just, you know, quick fire punch again and be able to pick up the king, right? Um, one thing to also note um, with the sand stream is, and also with the assault vest, is you always want to make sure that this is a, an even number um, because if this is an odd number, uh, you know, times 1.5 with the sand stream or even the assault vest, this will give you an odd number with the decimal. Uh, you don't want decimals because decimal will round it down. So you always want to have like a whole even number. So this way it's exactly uh, as it is, right? So, so either 126, 124, 122, these are all good numbers. So this way you get an exact value and not a decimal after multiplying by 1.5. And then the rest you just put in defense, right? Because that's, that's really all I need. And I always just invest a little bit more in special defense just because um, it's the lower of the stat, but technically it's not, right? Because let's say, you know, because you do have the assault vest and you do have the sand stream, right? Um, let's go to 122 here. Now what you can do is just do it like this and a little bit more in defense, which is always really nice um, because I have just a tiny bit more in defensible. Special defense, I'm actually pretty well covered because I have an assault vest and I have the sand stream. So this is a very, very bulky T-Tar set um, that can still deal a good amount of damage because I'm adamant natured, right? So if I just put this in here, uh, oops, that's not it. Yeah, right here, 12, and then the rest just goes into 36. Not like, not like this matters, but you know, I'm just showing you for the heck of it. All right, so still, you're, 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 you're cool with the make it rain top. And that's how you do it, all right? That's, again, factoring in a speed tier and a damage cap. all right? I survived make it rain. I could potentially outspeed it if I had Icy win on my team or something to give me plus one. All right, Dragon Dance was able to do that for me, but uh, I was not able to survive uh, a make it rain if they terrestrialize into a steel type. So that's something to think about. Uh, which is why a lot of Tyranitar is going for the Assault Vest. So I changed my build. I go with the Assault Vest this time uh, and then just have to have an option to help me out speed with something else on my team. And the rest just went into Defensive Bolt because that's all I have left in terms of units, right? So that's how you do it. And let's look at our last example here uh, with Gyarados just so that you can see, you know, again, how we do this. All right, last example here with Gyarados. So Gyarados has fallen off quite a bit uh in the meta because of recent pokemon that are rising but still relevant enough where we can still use it as an example um and we're just following the same kind of format we're looking for a speed tier looking to invest into attack and then leftover bulk and maybe potentially surviving something that does super effective damage right so for gyarados um i look through the list and i want to see something that does super effective damage against it that maybe i can try to outspeed or survive jolteon is not relevant enough so i'm not going to consider that but kilowattro is all right, so this is something that has risen a little bit uh, in recent tours, so we'll factor it in. Um, and we know that it can reach uh, 194 speed. So uh, it also gets access to Tailwind, but on expiration, we'll just assume that 195 is what we want to try and outspeed a Kilowattro. Well, then how are we gonna do that? And also, how do we survive like a Thunderbolt from Kilowattro, right? Because 105 special attack does hurt. All right, um, so, Let's focus on the speed tier first. So if I were to do 195 uh, divided by 1.5, it'll get me to 130. So I need to get to 130 with a plus one boost. All right, this is a lot of investment here, but how am I gonna get that? I do get access to Dragon Dance. All right, and I'll just run out the moves first. Um, so Waterfall here uh, and then Terra, Terra Blast here. This will usually be like Terra Grass. And that's also how you survive the the Thunderbolt or just like take it in electric attacks you just go Terra Grass and then over here we just put Protect. So 130 will let me outspeed Kilowattro, fine. But now how do I survive Thunderbolt? Truth of the matter is you can't but you have Grimstar on your team uh, and you understand that you have Light Screen support. So maybe with Light Screen and the correct HP slash Special Defense investment I can survive a Kilowattro Thunderbolt, right? So let's uh, take a look at that. Uh, in the, the damage calculator. But before that, let's just invest uh, in our attack stat first. So attack, we'll go to another bump here. So 165 is our first one. Let's go to a second one, 116, like this. So 176 is what we want. And then from here, I have 164 EVs left. So maybe I can factor in like some sand chip that T-Char likes to do. So I could go to 175, but this is like not bulky enough. Uh, so let me go to the next number. Uh, by the way, if you ever want to calculate sand chip, it's by 16. So if you just do 175 divided by 16 of your HP, 
right? Which is that you get 10.9. So 175 divided by 16, 10.9, which rounds down to 10 damage per turn of sand chip. If I were to go to the next one, um, it's 191. So 191 uh, will let me survive uh, more sand chip. Uh, you know, just if I were to do the math again, uh, this should be 11.9375. So 11 damage per sand chip. And then I have uh, that's it. That's all I have for the EVs. And then I don't have any, you know, defense or special defense investment, but I do have a Grimstar light screen. Uh, but let's see if this is enough to help me survive the Kilowattrel on the right, let's take a look. Okay, so let's go into the damage health here. So here's Kilowattrel. Here's Gyarados with our current EVs. And we see that a Timid 252 Thunderbolt from a Kilowattrel uh, does in fact uh, one shot uh, our Gyarados, right? And if I put in light screen, all right, can help a little bit. Uh, but 62.5 is still uh, too much of a risk where I, I, I need to get this down to at least 6.3%, right? I'm fine with 6.3. Even if I can't get zero, even if I can't like 100% live, 6.3% chance is going to be pretty good. So uh, I have to change my EV investments here. And let's, already, let's take away some of our attack, right? So let's do this. Let's take away 80 EVs. Um, and let's see if, if I put 80 more EVs in special defense that I can survive. Now, you might say this is now a weaker Gyarados. Yes, it, it might be, but you do have the option for Dragon Dance, and at the very least, you do have some bulk where you can stick around for a little bit longer, right? So, uh, the calc is more important, right? You can't deal damage if you're dead, okay? I always like to say that. So, if I go here, uh, I'll just put 36 investment. Is 80 EVs enough uh, to survive? All right, let me just keep going here. And again, I am factoring now that I have to put one point in the defense, uh, because I can't invest in only four stats and I have left over EVs, right? So uh, let's see if 76 is a deal. Can it get me to the calc that I want? Okay, and I can, but it's it's a little bit close. So it's 18.8%. That's still a little bit too high. So now what I have to do is uh, break my rule for HP optimization and min-max uh, my HP and special defense. So I'm going to drop my EVs for HP and increase my special defense for every... Uh, amount of HP that I dropped. So let's take a look at that. So it's every eight EVs. So let's just do this. All right, there's one. Uh, and is that enough? Not yet. So I'm going to keep going. 148, 92. Is that enough? Almost. Not yet. 140 and 100. Is that enough? And it is, right? 6.3%. There it is. I got the calc that I want. So now I'm just going to go back here, back, drop it down to 140. And then this, which was originally 76, now it's just. 100 defense investment special defense investment and that's it i got the calc that i want okay and you can see waterfall like doesn't quite pick up that ko but again if i had a dragon next boost already all right this is a pretty safe calc 75 percent chance to ko it um it might be sash but that's a argument for another day but the idea is that i'm able to i have a chance to outspeed it which um is this speed investment 228 which gets me to 130 uh, gets me to 195 after a plus one dragon dance then i have the uh ev bump in my attack stat over here with 36 and then this uh 140 investment in hp and 100 special defense where i was able to min max uh i can survive the kilowatt roll thunderbolt so i picked a defensive cup and then what kind of item do i want you know that's up to you it could be like clear amulet so just so that you don't have your your attack dropped or something like that right now the the if I had a citrus berry, okay, berry recovery, I have to make sure that my HP is still an even number uh, where I can get like a whole number recovery, you know, so this way it's not a decimal and doesn't reduce how much HP recovery I get. So it says restores a fourth of max HP when at half max HP or less. Okay, sure. Um, so what's one fourth of 188? This has to be a whole number. So 188 times 0.25, 47. So that's good. It works out. So. 47 HP recovery from a Citrus Berry Gyarados, uh, assuming that, again, this is uh, my EV's fair, which it is, right? So that's how you do it. So uh, hopefully you learned a little bit on how to do our EV spreads here. So we showed you what happens when you have item optimization, where you can optimize your HP. We showed you speed tiers. We showed you EV bumps and attack nature. We showed you defensive EV calculations. I didn't do any offensive ones, you know, but that's up to you. You can always do those yourself. I just wanted to show you how to do it. Yeah, I'll be, and I just use defensive uh, house as a, as a, you know, just as a, an example. But uh, you have my formula here, speed tier first, attack investment, HP bulk, uh, and then 
uh, damage calculation for the fourth one. So hopefully you found this video informative and it gave you a few ideas on how to EV your Pokemon for competitive play. We'll be back with another video in the next one, guys. Peace out. Have a good night.